Hi YouTube, this is Rachel from Sunbear Glass Craft and today we are going to talk about pattern making. When I first started making stained glass, this part of the process was so overwhelming to me. I didn't know where I was supposed to get patterns, how I was supposed to draw them up, how to size them, any of that. So I wanted to make this video to help demystify this part of the process. This is kind of one of the most important steps. I know I say that about everything, but without your pattern, you're not going to have stained glass. With all of that being said, today I'm gonna to cover three ways that you can either get or make patterns, as well as two ways that you can apply those patterns to your glass. I will be going into more detail about the way that I do things versus, uh, for instance, I don't use tracing paper for my designs, so I'm only going to touch on that very lightly because I don't want to speak about something that I'm not familiar with and practiced with. I'll also be giving you tips for actually designing your patterns because there's a few things that you need to keep in mind when you're getting everything drawn up. Everything will be timestamped so you can find it easily and all important links and information will be in the description box below. Without further ado, let's get into it. Our first way of getting stained glass outlines is going to be using pre-made patterns. There are plenty of resources for free patterns on the internet, the largest of which I'm aware of will be linked in the about section below. These free patterns tend to be more of the traditional style of stained glass, so if you're looking for something a little more intricate or new style, you might have to pay a small fee. It's also important to be on the lookout for copyright information on these patterns because some do not allow for commercial sales. Etsy has tons of listings for patterns which can range from $3 to $20 for a digital download. The benefit to getting pre-made patterns is it's really convenient for those who aren't artistically inclined or if you're just starting to hone your artistic ability. The downside is you're going to have less control over what you can find. If you have a vision for what you'd like to create, it is going to be difficult to find an exact fit. The next method for getting patterns is to put pencil to paper and draw them traditionally. This is how I created many of my first patterns, like the mushroom trio, the crystal, the cat skull. They all started with a pencil drawing that I then scanned and resized with a photography printer. By doing a traditional drawing, you can have more control of the size of your pattern without having to worry about fiddling around with computers. Our final method of making patterns is the method that I use, which is drawing digitally. I've gone over the equipment I use in previous videos, but I'll briefly touch on them again. For hardware, I have a Wacom Intuos 4 drawing tablet, and for software, I use Clip Studio Paint. I have a background in digital art, so for me, this is just the easiest way to create patterns. I can have all of my references on one screen and edit my design easily if I don't like how something I've drawn looks. Since I use Rapid Resizer to resize and print all of my outlines, I don't really take sizing into consideration when I'm drawing my outlines. This allows me more freedom to just make something I think is beautiful and worry about resizing later. So whenever you're designing your pattern, there's a few things you want to take into consideration. Um, your patience is a really, really big thing that I think people don't really consider. Um, some people are just generally more patient than others. Uh, if you're doing stained glass, I kind of hope that you are a more patient person because this is not a hobby or you know a, an art style that you can just rush through. I don't actually think there's many styles of art that you can just rush through, so especially not stained glass though. You also need to take into account your skill level, so if you're just starting out, it might not be best to start with really complex pieces just because you might want to pull your hair out. I think my biggest tip for pattern creation is to work with the flow of whatever it is that you're creating. If we take a look at this bird of paradise I made a few months ago, you can see that I used the details of the flower itself to create separation for all of the surrounding pieces. The orange pieces extend all the way to the border to create the separation in the green leaf that's behind it, and the same thing goes for the minty color part that goes off to the left. For the light green background piece, I make sure to follow the flow of the flower's parts upwards to make it less obvious that there's separation. At the same time, I made sure to make the lines meet with the veins of the leaves framing the top portion of the piece. 
As long as you take the time to make sure that everything flows nicely and everything is very cohesive, not only will that show to the people enjoying your artwork, but it'll make your life easier as well. So now I'm going to show you something that I've already created, but I want to show start to finish how I make my patterns. I usually first start with my border and then I'll go in and just very roughly sketch my idea just to get the idea on paper or on the screen. Once I have that rough idea, I'll then go in and make everything pretty and I'll make a separate layer that has very clean lines and very deliberate decisions about the flow of where everything is going to go. If you are doing things digitally, don't be afraid to just make a million layers, but make sure you label them. Um, I tend to label about half my layers and that can be a nightmare. <laughs> I also like to make a separate layer just for what I call the glass lines or the lines that are going to separate these really difficult pieces that I don't want to use a ring saw for. There are some pieces that I really like using my ring saw and I really like having complex cuts like the river on the mountain scene that I showed earlier was crazy but it's not necessary and sometimes I try to avoid. Next I'll go in with my color just to give a rough idea for myself as well as the commissioner. Um, for me. I generally have a really easy time visualizing things without actually having it in front of me, but I like to just go ahead and show this to the commissioner, that way they can kind of have an idea of what it's going to look like. Next I will go in and make the background a white, pure white color for whenever I import it to Rapid Resizer. Um, the gray is just a little bit easier on the eyes to work with while I'm coming up with the outline. The very last step that I'll do is go in and number everything. This is very important for me to get an idea of how long something is going to take me and I usually actually calculate my pricing as a dollar amount per piece and I find that it equals the same amount that I would get paid per hour. Now that my outline is all done, this is a really nice place to segue into how I actually get my patterns onto the glass. There's two main ways that you can do this. The, the method that I use is Sharpie and cardstock paper. So whenever I print my outline out, I just print it on cardstock and I cut it out with an X-Acto knife, nothing fancy. And then I put that cardstock on my glass and I just trace around it with a Sharpie. The other method is tracing paper and I don't use this method and I never have, so I don't want to elaborate about it too much. But basically you get your pattern onto the tracing paper, you cut your pattern out, and then you use a certain type of adhesive, sometimes glue stick I think works, and glue your pattern onto the glass. So whenever your pieces are cut and smoothed out, then you have to actually remove the tracing paper by I guess soaking it off. Like I said, I don't know too much about it, but I always avoided this because for me, tracing the outline onto the glass with Sharpie not only allows me to better visualize how the glass is going to look, but if I don't like it, I can very, very easily reposition it. Sharpie also comes off extremely easily. Um, if I do want it to stay on longer, then I'll just use metallic Sharpie so it doesn't come off in the grinder with all the water. One final thing I'll say about Sharpie versus tracing paper is that if you're going to be making a lot of something, I think Sharpie is going to be better. I can't imagine having to cut out and print out all the different pieces on tracing paper. So for me, Sharpie actually ends up just being more efficient in the long run. Well, I think that just about covers it for pattern making today. As always, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment down below. I try to explain things in the best way possible, but there's always going to be something that I leave out. So please feel free to comment, or if you have any video suggestions, leave that down in the comments as well. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I also have my PayPal and Patreon down below if you'd like to help support me in that way. I hope all of your projects are going well, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!